you know, the deal is when the water's cold, a lot of times he doesn't move that fast. And sometimes you're close, but you're not right on top of him. So you hop it a few times, you can entice him to come over there. But when their metabolism's up, typically if he's in sight of it, he's either gonna bite it or he's not. Typically when the water's warm, you don't have to be as thorough. You can, the strike zone will be much bigger, you know, so you can, you don't have to fish on top. Where in real cold water, a lot of times, I mean, you might have to hit all the way around him to entice him into biting. 90% of the bites I've had here doing this the last couple days have come on the initial drop. I mean, instantly. And then the other 10% have come the first time I moved it. Help, got it the first time I hopped it up. So I basically, I'll pick it up, shake it a little bit, and, and I don't want to kill much time. I'll spend a little more time under a deep mat because that's a place he could come from a, you know, a larger area. You know, in Florida, they just love to stage on these places and those reed heads, you know, you find the right one, you know, especially this time of the year or actually even a little earlier is even better. And you'll get, have fish going both ways. You'll catch fish under it that are pre-spawn and fish under it that are post-spawn. And you know, the deal with that is you have to do a lot of fishing. It's not one of those deals where you can pull into and, you know, if they're isolated, yeah, if there's two or three in this bay and the rest of this bay is open, then we know that isolated them. But these are mostly dominantly hyacinth. That's the other thing. That is the best mat stuff. Like that stuff will isolate a fish. It can be all kinds of different matted stuff. And all of a sudden there's a patch of hyacinth. Will you fish that first? Because that stuff will isolate the fish. So it grows together, but it's an individual plant that grow. That's like that was one plant. So when you see a whole bunch of them together, it's just a bunch of individual plants. And that stuff will, typically you can pick it up and it'll be just working alive with like, like there's some kind of little old critter, you know, stuff. And I, I don't know if like bait fish is attracted to it or, it's from South America, it's exotic, but our fish have taken to it, you know, they like it. Not a 10. Typical flipping fish in Florida <laughs> when you're flipping heavy cover <laughs> with an ounce and a half weight. I mean, that big hook oh. And now I could just use him for bait. Just leave him hooked just like that and pitch him back in there. Look at him. Uh-oh, uh-oh, come out of that boho. Now he bit light, so light. I just had to keep diving in there. That's what's supposed to live in that stuff, isn't it? Look at that hook, perfect. No waves coming off. Some nice I went, what I done was these fish are in those cattails. They're not in, uh, they're not under a mat. They're just in that heavier cattails. So I dropped the size of the weight. Cause I, you know, when I was getting to those cattails where I was getting bit, I still had that ounce and a half in my hand. Cause I was trying to punch through that, uh, punch through that stuff. So I went to that smaller weight because I'm not really needing it, you know, to get through those cattails. So that's the third bite I've had and we've not moved the boat. I mean, I will just keep plucking them from their nest. It's like a nest in there. That's a Strike King punch bug, black and blue, which is just always hard to beat in Florida. It's dark in there. 
If you'll notice, it's made for penetration. All the appendages lay back on it, so when it goes down through that stuff, there's nothing sticking out. To, you know, nothing sticking out, so it just goes through really easy. The other deal is, it's a small bait, but because of the way it's made, it'll carry that six saw hack attack hook. And I, and when I'm, if you notice, you know, I'm having to put so much pressure on those fish to get them out from back in there that it's important. I like that big hook; it, it gets down in there a lot farther and you know, where you get a good hookup. Cause you can tell, I, I can't get the boat in there. I'm gonna have to drag him out. You know, the thing about typically this type of cover, and I don't care if you're in New York, Florida, Louisiana, California, you find this more times on natural lakes. You always find something and it doesn't matter the type of vegetation. You see in Florida, of course, it's blessed with all different types, but I mean, I just always look for this. You know, a lot of times it's seasonal, it can be on lakes that have deep water where fish live offshore, but then they, when they make that move in the spring, they like that. It's like security cover, you know? It's just places that they, they feel secure. You know, they're not bothered by predators. And, but I catch them, you know, just about every state in the United States that a, uh, a bass exists the big enough. I mean, and how fun is it? But like I was saying, regardless of what state in the country, you're uh, you're fishing. If that if you can find some vegetation and it has largemouth, they'll be there. You know, I even caught a uh, big smallmouth at Malax flipping reeds because there was a big crawfish population. Those smallmouth were up there around those reeds eating crawfish. I mean, a nest of them. <laughs> we have found the nest. <laughs> This boat, I am tearing, this boat is going to need a clean up after this. That's what I like. I'll be honest with you. So like a guy if I was farming corn, I want my tractor to be dirty. That means it's been working. That's where I want this boat to look. Well, one thing you can just, you know, it can be just like how many fish can be in one area. Like when you get bit in a place, you know, make sure you take it apart because I got one bite there. Then the next thing you know, that one bite has turned into six bites and I still haven't moved the boat. And so you have to be real thorough too, because this other thing you got to think about. The strike zone in there is pretty small because it's like dropping that bait into a forest. You got to drop right on their head. You know, and I'm just fishing every crack in there. You know what I mean? I'm being real. So now I know there are multiple fish in there. So I have just, it's like a checkerboard. I'm covering every square. Well, the other deal is this exists all around the country and we've been around a hundred boats today and we've not seen anybody fishing that way. And you know why? Cause it's a little work to it. It can be painstakingly slow. You know, it's that needle in a haystack deal, but you know, a lot of times the rewards are there if you'll just spend your time doing it and do it right. You know what I mean? Have the right equipment, the right rod, the right weight, the right hook, the right bait. And uh, a lot of people avoid this because it's hard. You know, but my deal with it is, yeah, it's hard, but it's just like when we lit down right here, you know, in the last five minutes, I've caught seven bass and missed two, you know, so when you find them, it's worth it. So I always spend some time. I just know what the rewards are to it. You can catch the biggest fish that lives in a lake. You can catch numbers. I mean, it really has everything when it sets up right. Now, it's not always going to be right. There's not going to be, there are certain times of the year when they don't want to be in there. You know, maybe they're spawning or they're, but then, you know, they're here, they're on the edge and it just gives them that security cover. They move this way instead of moving this way. Cold weather will push them into places like this. When they come, like say you're on a lake and they've come shallow to spawn and you have a cold front comes through. They just, they don't swim back out where they came from offshore. They just tuck right into that thick cover. They like to sit there. The other thing that happens with it is heat. That sun shining on it, even on a cold day, that brown grass and weeds and, and it, it, like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be cattails. It doesn't matter what type of vegetation it is. Every place is different. You know, every place has different kinds. Always check it because there's always a chance. And like I said, sometimes it's trial and error because we're at a place where it has lots of it. And, and I, but I've kept them honest because I, in my mind, it was the right time today. You know, when that sun came out, it just seemed like you know, it's kind of a front was passing. 
it was just it's just so good during you know frontal conditions post frontal conditions it's like us you know there are days when it's real nice and we want to be outside and then there are other days when the weather's bad and we want to be under our roof and that's kind of the situation you know that we've had going on well you know a, a lot of people veer away from this type of fishing because of the size of the weight you have to use so i've downsized from an ounce and a half to an ounce and a quarter you know because the cover is not as thick but the, the the deal is that's still you know most people are like a three sixteenths to a three eighths for the average fisherman is you know the weight they use so they when you start talking about these ginormous weights that it would take to get through that cover it just i think it kind of it's intimidating now i like a 7-eleven you don't need to have you don't have to use a rod this long okay that's up to the the user what you're more comfortable with this is a 7-eleven super duty but what you do need whether you use a seven foot a seven six a seven eleven you need a rod with the right action it'll carry that weight if you put that big weight on a rod that's too small too limber on the tip you're only going to make a handful of casts and your wrist will be wore out honestly you, you got to have a bigger rod it works as a counterbalance so the deal is i have that big old weight out there on the end i need enough weight on this end so it doesn't wear me out doing this because you got to stay in it long enough to learn how to do it so the deal is the first thing you need to do is acquire the right rod because you know realistically for this technique you're going to be using a three quarters a lightweight more times than not it's a one ounce to an ounce and a half and um, i even go to a bigger rod when i go to bigger than an ounce and a half now most people and like most of the time even for me if you're not in florida you can typically a one ounce to an ounce and a half you can get by with but you still need a big rod to do that because again think about it like this you got all that weight out there on the end and uh, it's on your wrist so having that heavier bigger rod back this way it kind of takes the weight off of you and it makes the technique easier and it takes time it's one of those deals that almost goes back to where you've heard this before that you know what when you're going to go out there and learn to do this and attack this type of cover don't take another rod just take the stuff to do this and spend the day doing it and i think most people you know they again it's an intimidating type of fishing but once they see what the rewards are with it and the kind of places that you can pull a bass out of there's going to be a lot more people out there with a big flipping stick in their hand and some braided line and a punch bug because this is fun like when i can pull up in a place and fish the length of the boat and catch seven bass i actually had i think 10 bites and caught seven of them you know and never moved the boat i'm like that's just how powerful a technique it is and um, the other deal is it's the size of the fish not only can you catch a bunch you can catch big ones and big ones are relative okay big ones in florida are seven to ten pounders big ones in michigan are three to five pounders but regardless of what state you're in there's always a chance to catch the biggest fish that live there regardless if it's a three pounder or a 12 pounder fishing like this because big fish feel safe in matted vegetation you know thick cover they like it it can be lily pads you know it doesn't always have to be like it can be individual plants like we have here cattail heads hyacinth mats we got pennywort it can be matted milfoil matted hydrilla thick lily pads i've done this technique in almost every type of vegetation water willow you know there are lakes in alabama where in the summer the water willow mats over it's the same deal and you know there are lakes out there that those fish just live unmolested all year long because nobody's doing it but it's a great technique almost year round with the exception of the spawn that's about the only time that this technique is not that strong and you know because then those fish want sunlight and typically they'll be out you know on the edge of cover then but other than that it's almost 365 you can almost catch them this way 365 days a year you know i'm blessed to live in south louisiana part of a country where i never go fishing that i don't have a flipping stick you know to go through a mat there because there it's about 365 because don't all fish spawn at the same time and so you'll have fish in different phases and just fish love the safety of that overhead cover and sometimes they're drawn in there by bait like there are certain situations where bluegill will spawn up in those reed heads and um, crawfish will be feeding on dying vegetation 
you know, I told you the deal at Mille Lacs, I caught those smallmouth flipping reeds and the deal was, it was the reeds were full of crawfish. That smallmouth is not a, is not known as a heavy cover fish, but they were there and it was fun. They were there feeding on, because the bait was there. You know, and fish do that. You know, they're just, things happen, mayflies hatch out, which will attract bluegill and then largemouth go into places and, you know, to eat the bluegill. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for fish to use that type of cover and they don't really need a huge reason. They like it.